All right, guys, today we're going to begin a new project. Uh, it's called the Wick Editor Project 2 Keyframe Animation. Um, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to create a keyframe animation that is 36 frames in length, 12 frames per second. Um, uh, these are the settings we're going to set up. And the first thing you need to do is get this template. So to do so, you click on the template. Once it opens up, please do not right-click this. If you click right-click and save the image as, it will be the wrong size. Click on these three dots over here. Oops, let's try that again. Click on these three dots over here. Click open in new window. And as soon as it opens up full size, you still don't right click it, you click the download button. As soon as you click the download button, it'll download to the bottom left hand corner. I usually just collapse my screen and then drag it onto the desktop. Once it's on the desktop, we're gonna go to the Wick editor. When you first open the Wick editor, if you worked on a project before, it's gonna ask you if you want to load that project or if you want to delete it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. And we're going to first by start start by setting up the stage. Okay, to do that, you're going to click on the small gear over to the right, and we're going to click on 1080, and that automatically changes this from 1920 to 1080 at 12 frames per second, which is the requirement of this project. You may want to name your project. I'm going to call this um, my progressive animation. And you may want to click on this little shortcut tab just to get familiar with some shortcuts. If you're a shortcut person, they have uh, activate the brush. Um, <clears throat> you can click on, um, let's see, edit controls. This is show you how to break things apart. You're going to be using this one a lot. Copy, control C, cut, control X, paste, control V. You'll be using those a lot. You may want to just get handy with those. Okay, but I need to click on that again and make sure I'm at 1080 and then I just click apply. Notice the whole screen turned white. I'm going to kind of zoom out and I'm going to lift my timeline up just a little bit so we can see it. And the first thing you need to do is go import your asset or your image. Okay, so I'm going to click on this little button right over here and I'm going to upload an asset. I'm going to click on my desktop and there it is right there. And if I hover over it, you'll notice that dimensions are 1920 by 1080. I will click on that and import. Once it's imported, I'm just going to drag it onto the desktop like so. And you'll notice because I did it the right way, it is exactly the right size. So I'm going to move it into place. You may need the arrow keys for this to get it right where you want it. That looks about right. And we are ready to begin the project. First thing we're going to do is over here on the layer, we're going to stretch this out to the requirement of frames which on the requirements, it says to stretch it to 36 frames. And once it's stretched out, I'm gonna go ahead and lock this layer by clicking on the lock and start a new layer. Now the problem with what I have here is that I do not want my second layer to be underneath my background layer. So I'm gonna grab this layer and drag it right on top. So now the background layer is on the bottom. That way anything we, we draw will be on top. Now basically all you're gonna do is fill this up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the very first frame and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Now, if you zoom in and you're like, well, I don't wanna, how am I gonna get up here? I can't pin up there now. Don't forget about this little toolbar over here. This tool right here is called the pan tool. And if you click on it, your mouse turns into a big plus sign and you can move down or move this anywhere you want so that you can animate a portion of it. For example, if you just wanted to work on the, the word the. I'm just gonna work on the word bush real quick. I'm gonna click on the paintbrush. You can do it however you want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just fill in some polka dots, just something real simple. Um, let's choose a color that's a little prettier than black. Let's do a bright red, and then we're ready to go. Just X that out, and we're gonna start with just some little dots. Now, please do not copy this design. It is not the greatest. I want you to do something a little bit more exciting. I'm gonna show you some examples in a minute some of the really good ones I had last year. Oops. If you mess up, remember control Z is your shortcut to take off whatever you did. Okay, for time purposes, I'm gonna speed up a little bit, but please make sure you stay inside the lines. I've already had a couple turned in that aren't. Then this is what you're gonna be doing a lot. You're gonna click on this frame, control C is copy. To move one frame over, click the period button and then just go control V paste. That's a progressive animation because now we have whatever was on frame one on frame two, we're progressing. Now I'm just gonna pick a different color. Let's do green, X that out, and we're gonna do it again. So now I just put some dots. 
And the idea here is to be creative. Last year I had people that used symbols. I had people that used um, little lines they drew with the pencil tool. I had people that did um, fruits. I mean, you wouldn't believe what they come up with. Okay, so let's go over here and click on this. We're going to do it one more time. Control C, Control, and then move over one, and then Control V, and we'll change our color. Okay, I really do like them if they have tons of color. Okay, you'll see the ones that I picked last year that I'm going to show you in just a second, that all of them are very colorful. Okay, just like me, I'm colorful. Anyways, as I fill this in, you can see we're getting kind of a cool little design here. If I could take my time, I would, but I want you guys to have time to work on the project. You get the idea. Um, and I'm going to go down and uh, just play this for you. So I'm going to remove my playhead, and I'm going to click play. Okay, it's only going to go for three frames, so here it comes around again. There it is, and one more time. Check it out. Okay, you can see how it's going to kind of fill in. Now, you're going to fill the whole template in, and then you're going to unfill the whole template. Okay, let's look at some examples. On my desktop, I have some pretty cool ones. Check out this one. This is from last year, me putting them all together. Pretty neat. Look at all the different ideas they had. We actually use this as the introduction to our morning announcements for a long time. You may have seen it. It was a couple of years ago. Okay, those are some really great ones. Okay, so I hope you like those. Um, the uh, when you're done with the project and you got it all finished up, remember it's going to be 36 frames long, which is three seconds, and you're going to click on export, and you're going to export it as an MP4. Okay, a video export video. We're not going to do a GIF on this one. Export video. You just click on it. it takes a little bit of time to save because it is a pretty uh, involved graphic, and then it should download right over here to the bottom left hand corner. Okay, once it's totally ready to go. It should download like so. Once it's completely downloaded, it'll take a little bit because that was just a few frames and it took uh, you know 30 seconds or so. Yours may take two or three minutes. And once you get it here, you can watch it on here and see what it looks like. Okay, mine looked just fine, but just not very long. Okay, that is all. If you need any help, watch the tutorial again. See what you can get done. We want some really creative ones. The best two or three in each class I plan on putting on the announcements. That's all. And as always, it's another great day to eat a hamburger.